as we okay. we now have this amazing situation where we're, we're talking about um, art again and not just medium specific art which is the, the educational and pedagogical environment that we kind of represent here and um, this idea of the non-editing of this show was a thing that came to mind for me the actual editing and the non-editing and the way that the monitors function so you're not looking at them as pictures but they're looking at them at floor level which comes very much from the kind of forms of making exhibitions in garage spaces and you know really sort of hit and run type spaces which mm. I like very much in terms of the travelogue in your work and also when you sit and look at them you get lost somewhere between the narrative and the selection and the editing that for me is very important and then you have these which are very fixed but they're actually very very different photographs so when we came the other day so I've got prior knowledge of this now we're talking about the idea of time and duration within the making of work and the way that your mind changes over the period of time as an artist. It's actually a bit of music written about that by Strauss, I think, from Goethe, to, called, called, called Metamorphosia, about the changes that happens in an artist's life and in their mind throughout their lifetime. So this idea of this journey which you've made, this incredible journey, is very interesting to me and in relationship to the, the time aspect of making objects and being associated with objects and installation so for me that was my way into this which is why i thought it'd be nice for us to come and think about photography as it absolutely is today and in this relationship it's good because it's part of the journey that you're on and we're all on a similar kind of journey so i thought we could tap in and out to some of the ideas of um how you think about time within your work and like going back to some of those images where they began like the ones of the punk rockers for mm. example and then there's one of your daughter from like yesterday. Mm. And they sometimes come up together. So there's this unedited thing, which Christian Boltanski loves very much as well. But the way you do it, it's actually very subtle. So I'm very interested in that side well, of the work. It's a strange thing. I don't, I don't really think about time within the images or the photos. But then I do at the same time. It doesn't sound very clear, does it? But when, for, for instance, if I'm looking at an image, I just kind of look at the image at, with now, for now. So if the image still speaks to me, if I still get excited by it, or if I'm newly excited by it, then they're equal. It's, it's really about whether an image stands up. And, and if, if that image was taken 10 years ago, or 20, or five years ago, or five minutes ago, then they're all valid. I mean, th half the problem is actually working out which images still w work out. So it's kind of interesting as well. With, with photography, you have a slightly detached level where you look at the work because it's mediated through the, the camera and the film and the, those days the, the digital it's, it's mediated through all these different processes so you can be a little bit detached and then time also gives you a detached thing and one one of the things you know everything's very instant now but one of the things i used to like doing and i still do it is i'd take a photograph when i was somewhere and actually never even get the, the image processed until maybe a month later and then then look at them and, and the idea being to forget how or why I took the image, but then be able to just look at the image and say, as, as, a, as a third person in a way. So it wasn't my image, it wasn't my, but, but of course you can never quite escape your, your personal relationship with the image, but it was a way of me trying to sort of still work out whether that thing, whether it's, whether it's an interesting image, whether it still worked, whether it's not just me, because we have a tendency as, as artists, writers, whatever, to always like what we do too much, or maybe don't like what we do too much. And to get this sense of objectivity in your work is, I think, one of the hardest things. And, and um, so, and it's, of course, you always some, you often think that the, 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 the most recent things you do are the best, and the older things aren't the best. I mean, it's, it's a very weird and hard thing sometimes to, to um, think, oh, well, the thing I took maybe 10 years is a better photograph than the thing I did now. Or I was in a different circumstances, or I was, well, I was younger, I was in a different mindset. So it's very, it's very strange kind of way. Of, and that all goes into time, but it, you, you know, and then, you know, you might be in a different relationship or, you know, different headspace. It's a very strange thing. But, but the point is, I have a box full of images or a lot now on the computer, and I just look through them and go, well, that was a good one, that's a good one. And then just kind of keep keep editing. But I, I don't photograph in terms of series. I tend to just photograph and put things into sort of 
in interstate. So it's, it's quite interesting that we, when we sort of selected a lot of the work for showing, uh, a lot of the work doesn't really come. It's kind of old work, but it's been re newly made because it's never really been properly printed and um, or 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 editioned or even properly shown. So um, you know, a lot of a lot of the ones on around here don't go beyond about 2003. So that's a very strange thing. Sometimes you think, oh my God, it should be, what have I been doing for the last seven years? Um, or maybe it's old work, but it, it doesn't matter if you sit back and then you just go, well, it's, it's still worth kind of showing. You know, I've got, I've got uh, another exhibition in my gallery today of photos by, by an Austrian artist, Hermann Nitsch, and some of these photos go back to the 1950s up until t the present. And those, they're equally as valid and equally as interesting. And, um, you know, so, I don't know. Um, but that, that the point is also is that next door you have those monitors. Which yeah. Have many images. That that's a way of giving freedom because the problem with photography, of course, is like how big do you, do you print them? How many do you do? What what do you do with them? And the great thing with say a monitor, or in the old days it would be a slideshow, is you can just put them on and, and show them, um, and that gives you a flexibility to to do, you know, and. Um, we talked about what it would be like if we could just choose one mm. and have it printed and then take it home. Someone's already done that. Because <laughs> <laughs> you come in here and you know, you, often we rather passively, when we come into a space and we see things framed on a wall, we almost leave our sort of physical selves mm. behind and we passively walk around looking. But the idea of being able to go in and look at monitors and moving mm. and changing and different kinds of editing is actually very interesting and then being able to select from that mm. is actually makes us it makes us not passive it makes us very physically involved in the space which yeah. there's a lot of us here today but when you come in sort of and there's just a few of you and um, you get more of a sense of the of the physical nature of how photographs can drag you into a space differently to just looking at them you can actually get involved in the selection of them the editing of them and some people are very very responsive to looking at Images. These three are completely different kinds of images, completely different. And then you go around there, there's the man photograph, the one there, then there's the two monitors, and it's a very spatial um, engagement. And you have to get used to sort of going into a, an exhibition and actually using space as well, and not just the, the objects you're looking at. So I think it's actually quite a subtle um, installation. But I, I'm interested in it because the idea of selecting and choosing because I've chosen my favourite images and I've thought about them. It's not like the Cartier-Bresson situation of taking a moment with an analog camera. And that's the other, the other thing is that you have, um, you have gone from the analog world into the digital world. And has that changed the way that, that you operate or that you function as a photographer? Um. Or did you never do analog photography because you're a painter, weren't you? Yeah, no, I, I actually I used to have eye in dark room, and I, which I sold a few years ago, well, all the bits to it. And, um, and I, I, I taught myself to print and I bought all this equipment and I quite enjoyed being in the, in the dark room. And, but the problem is you can get seduced and, and you can, can become obsessed with being in the dark room. But, but um, you know, one of my problems, I, I, these are all shot on with medium format camera. And I still love the medium for, format. There's a, a slowness to it, which you're talking about time, there's a slowness to the images and and, um, and the slowness to how I, I shoot. But I also, a lot of the images, say in the other room, I sh sh shot with a handheld uh, little compact camera, very co good quality one, but nevertheless, good co and, and then with a kind of move into digital, it's, it's taken me up until quite a few years to actually find a digital camera that I'd like to carry around with me, because the problem with the digital cameras is was the shutter lag. I hated the shutter lag on a digital camera, and now the technology is in. And I found a little camera, and I enjoy walking around. So I can still take photos in the same way. But then the processing of them is just so much quicker, you, you know, which is a very different thing. And I've got to, I've got to watch out with, with that, because, I, again, I liked the, the difference, of the separation of having a film and then waiting for a while before I, I printed them, I, I got them the next done and then seeing them and, and now it's all very very instant and um, it, it it can almost be too there's too much you know I can get 700 shots on my on my um, digital camera and that's shooting raw files I mean that's a hell of a lot of, of stuff and it, it you can end up sort of firing away too much but that's that's part of, of the, the thing really part of the process part of, it's part of the process of if you make photographs you have to actually put that time in 
to look at them, don't mm. you? It's not something you can do on a laptop as well as you can on a great big monitor. You know, it's something that you can actually get involved in. And that looking back over over many images, I think it's it's something that it's something that adds certainly to. I've got thousands of images on files, mm. and a multimedia um, hard drive which is loaded with loads of them, and I sometimes just put them on, stick them in the back of a television, and just sort of look at them. And I rephotograph slides off the mm. wall with a digital camera, and and these are these then are they scanned? Prints that were scanned and then printed digitally, or yeah, yeah. And could you tell us a bit about how would you, for example, choose an image like that? How would you, how did you print Yeah, or even for the inclusion in the show. What well, makes that okay, so one you want to print? It's, it's, again, with with a with a slide show things, you you know everything's like at that, this moment ten second loop, but that's it. it it's they're kind of interesting images. But then when it comes to, say, printing that image, paying for it, framing it, you think, how long is that image strong enough to be looked at? Is it, is it strong enough to be, to be looked at over a long period of time to get back, to get forward, to, to make you think? Is it, is it and, and, and sort of just choosing a small amount of images to make, to make some sort of sense. And I wanted to choose, well, we, we, we kind of did it together with, with the gallery, but something about the quiet image. And, and, and quite long. These, these are quite slow images to look at. They're, they're all about sort of singular things within within landscapes. Even if there are a couple of people, they're kind of very sort of slow, almost quite quiet images, and, and almost meditative really. And I, I quite like the idea of having something that would just be static and and um, I don't know. They they would hold them their own as well over a long period of time. So you could keep going, coming back to them and and. And you know, it's that's kind of how I how, how I thought about these these these, these images. Uh, um, so what we should do really is once some people have said a bit about here, yeah, we should then go to the next space after, and we should look at what happens with the images next door, with the moving ones as well. Yeah, it's a very different kind of use of of space and use of meaning, isn't it? Mm. Does that make sense? Do you think? Because it's very different, isn't it? These are very much about comp these are compositional images. I mean, they could be even bigger, or they, you know, this is a kind of a nice size that sits well in this gallery. We made them for this gallery at this yeah. size, and um, and there's a physicality to. I mean, there's something um, quite about the selection and, and, and the life of a photo when it when you decide to actually print it and edition it and and frame it. It's you've got to be so sure all the time because you. And that's you know it's a, it's a it's a bigger responsibility. Whereas on a slideshow, it's it's kind of interesting, but you're not making that same value to each image, which is not to say that they're any less valuable, because they could be in a different show. You know, they could be printed up in in, in a different kind of a show. But um, so they're all the sort of decisions which. This is the problem. Of, well, it's the problem. It's the beauty of photography is is how you can display, format, um, show. It's it's kind of an endless possibilities. That's really, that's why it is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Because this space it's confusing often, as well, especially in colleges and and certain kinds of spaces. They just fill the space. You know, if there's a wall. They fill it. And this is a nice example. At least you know, well, not doing that, doing something very different. If if there's this one thing which is if you have less. To look at means you've got to look at it more. Um, the, in a strange irony, which means that you you've really got to, and, and it means that everything you put into the, the show, the gallery, actually has to count for something more. If you have lots and lots of things, you can just. But you're directing an audience to look at things. They've got to like it or not like it. it doesn't matter. But you're saying look at these images, and, and you're kind of directing them. And but then you've got to be. That's a bigger commitment as well for those images. Those images have to be more committed images. You can put lots and lots of things up and give people a choice of what they're going to spend time on. But you know, if you have one image in the gallery, and that's all. That's what you're going to look at, and, and that's. Um, that's a good word, commitment, isn't it? Yeah. Especially like in our context, to actually be very committed to selecting something, and um, so your eye is drawn to exactly what you present mm. and nothing else. Which I think is very important and interesting. So it's actually making a commitment to saying something very particular, mm. as opposed to just blanket bombing mm. with everything. 
Whereas the slideshow, you can kind of wander through it, turn away, come back, there's some other images. You know, it's a more, has a uh, sort of a dynamic kind of thing going to it. It takes you through a little story. But that's, it's a different way of looking at it. You tend to remember the, I think for me, I tend to remember the moving images and the moving slides very differently. In fact, these images, I do, I get, I remember them in the space. Whereas when I look at them on the monitor, I tend to remember particular yeah. images because they're memorable and slightly different to other images. Yeah. So I do a kind of editing thing. But when I see images like this, I tend to remember the entire space and where, they're, where they are actually in the space. Yeah. So I can describe exhibitions after I've left them. But I wouldn't be able to, I could describe the monitors. And I have picked out a few images that are yeah. actually very memorable. But it's a very different form of remembering photographs. I think, I think nowadays most people look at things through screens. I mean, people are not even getting their photos printed up. They're, they're taking their holiday snaps on, on their iPhones, they're sending them off to their, their mates, they're not even bothering getting, well, some people do, but on the whole, people don't even print things up because their the phones or the tablets or the computer screens are, are big enough to have them, plus, plus they're, they're shooting with digital media now as well. Um, and the way people look at look at art is very much through screens. It's um, you know, our, our life is dominated by screens. <laughs> you know, I even look at my, my, my work through screens more and more, and, and that's becomes very easy, becomes very um, fast, quick, simple, um, almost uh, a throw almost disposable. Um, but that's the kind of nature of, of how we look at imagery now, really. Um, Although we're going to change that. <laughs> Cultural war. You think of Jeff Wall and actually constructing you know, images as well and, and going, going back into trying to understand why photography is actually so much more than disposable, is actually part of the tool of, of being creative. That's where I think it gets very interesting, especially in the context of what we're you know, we're sort of building the future and that's why I think photography is very much one of the tools that we embrace differently plus the, 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 the current very important trend towards the document and the archive which is an incredibly complicated language and a lot of it is to do with focus and, and understanding it's almost anthropological should we um, um, open up to some people what they might think about this side and then do a quick Change over to the moving part. Would that if you make want sense? To, if you want to move to the next part, or if you wanted to stay here, it's up to you. <laughs> I should, no, I think we should move to the next part as well because it's okay. a very significant yeah. shift. Could I just ask, when you actually were looking at the photographs on the screens, <coughs> do you find you get nostalgic about them, remembering where you were or yeah. what mindset you were Weirdly, in? Weirdly, yeah, but I'm also s separated as well from them. So yeah, I do. It's weird. Um, I mean, one of the one of the ways I, one of the reasons I started, because I was a painter, I studied painting, one of the reasons I started taking photos was because um, to try and make some sort of sense out of my, I know it sounds really trite, but um, I was kind of going out a lot and I was sort of drinking a lot and doing lots of stuff and, and um, not really remembering a lot of things and I just started taking cameras out with me. That's why I started with a little tiny camera first of all, a little, little Yashica. And, and, um, and, I started, and I started making paintings from the photos, but then I kind of realised the photos are more interesting than the paintings. And then I'd go look through and think, oh god, that was interesting. And, and they were like an aid to my to my life, a memory aid, memory jogger. And so this thing of being sort of slightly separated from the photos is, is good. But but then you can never quite get away from because every time I look at the photo, I remember exactly, well pretty much exactly, what I was doing, why and when. And that goes back to even some of the earliest photos I made, even as a kid. Um, some of the other things. So there's a, they do act as, as that kind of memory thing, but they're not about that. That's just my personal, the, 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 pro the thing is for me, that's my personal, you know, I remember when I was in Odessa and stayed in this shitty um, motel. It was the most desperate kind of place, I think, one of the most desperate places I've ever been to. And, and it, it was a really miserable place, but really interesting. It was a, you know, but, and I, I remember that and, um, but that's not for, that's my memory of my image. The image is supposed to go out into the world and they exist on its own. And, and you, you don't have that memory of, of that, taking that image, but the image isn't about that. But that's just my personal thing. But, but for you, it's, 
well, hopefully, it's, it, it's an image that stands on its own. It's not about me anymore. It's the image that takes on, it, takes on its own life. Um, as, yeah. Um, Is that possible, though? So if I go to a Martin Parr exhibition, I'm very aware that, that someone took the photograph. Mm. So I, I kind of almost feel like I'm looking at something with the photographer. It might just be a perversity I have, but I become very aware that someone's taken well, the Well, I photograph. think that's the same for all images, isn't it? All are. You, when you go and look at a Rembrandt, are you looking at Rembrandt, the painter, or are you looking at the, the portrait he's, of, or he's painted it of? You know, it's... it's the person he's painted in this off. context, um, but if it's in a magazine, you don't tend to have empathy with no. a photographer, really, yeah. unless it's presented that way, even in National Geographic. But where, yeah. when you go to a museum space, some, there is something of the, the person yeah. that's presented to you. They're not, they're not anonymous in that respect. Mm. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. But then the image still has to exist on its own as the Martin Parr image, it still has to be a good <laughs> image that draws you to look at it. It's, you know, from Brighton, whatever it is. It's, um, that image there is a bit, feels quite anonymous. I can't imagine you ever taking an image like that. I just can't <laughs> think that you as the person could ever take that, and I could never have guessed that you took it, actually. Well, there's lots of images that, that I could throw out there you wouldn't even know that. Absolutely. I, um, yeah. They just, because I don't tend to shoot a series, so I was in a hospital Taking some, I was actually I was t doing some work for some, for for a hospital. But I, I tend to also like to take some of my own work at the same time. And I was able to be in, in this operating theatre. And I just thought, oh, that's a great, interesting um, photograph. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, some things, some things work out like that. That's quite nice, really. That Hans Peter Feldman, who sort of worked as a photo archivist and will also then make work mm. to the side of that. That's actually very interesting, because you worked in, in the prof as a profession in photography. Well, the great thing for me when I really started doing more and more photography was, was being able to get into other people's lives, get into situations and places that I would never normally get into. As a painter, I'd, I'd go into my own routine and meet, meet with my paint friends. And, and I was, but as a photographer, I'd go and hang out with some crazy punk rockers in the Basque country, or. Um, uh, you know, I'd go to well, in hospitals or travel, mm -hmm. or I go to um, and and I I uh, I worked with with some computer programmers um ten years ago, and that was weird. I would have never never met these people outside. So I have, you know, have cameras, will travel, and you get it enables you to to go into other people's worlds, into life, get in and get out. But but you also kind of lose a little bit of yourself while you're doing that as well. Because on one hand, I'm in someone else's world. I've got to be sensitive. I, I kind of lose part of myself while you're in their world because you're mm. you're ex exploring their world. You're trying to get your images, but it's about them. It's a, I mean, it's a strange kind of place being being. It's a very solitary place being a photographer because you're always on your own. You're always observing other other people, other things. You're never quite, you know, um, with them. Can, can I ask, sort of, um, I'm just curious about how you've staged these photographs, mm. I and mean, they're quite stark. In, in some ways, mm. and uh, and just talking about sort of people, how you. I mean, there's, there's no there's no one in these photographs. I there are no, like no, no, not in this yeah. section here. So you've selected them in a particular way, mm. and they're presented in a, 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 a sort of quite a stark way mm. as well. Um, do, would you? Well, they are about people, even though no one's here. They're, they're all either man-made structures or environments. You know, whether it's an operating so there's a presence of people without. People actually being in there. Well, the, um, but the thing is, it's almost like so when you see a photograph that has no one in it, yeah. or you, you kind of, in, in a way, you're able to imagine yourself within it as yeah. well. So I'm, I'm just sort of curious about that, where, whereas the, the photographs in this section here mm. are very much about encounters with punk rockers or mm. you know, sort of footballers or, or other people on the other side of. Uh, of, of, the, of the other monitor, so it is about uh, you get a sense of those other people's lives, mm. whereas in a way this is kind of almost imagining your life or or, or how you. I'm just asking you know, why it is presented that way to us, and is it an invitation for us to enter in a way without the the um, the obstacle of, of the other being there? I hadn't really. 
thought it through like that. I think um, I just I, no, that sounds strange. I think that um, when we were looking at these, it just seemed that these images, the one of the, the uh, antenna or the Donald Judd sculpture, or the, they just seem to work in a, in a, I think just purely in a relationship way. So it's more about the sort of visual compositional relationship, having a singular kind of images. In the world. And, and it, I think it was more hung uh, with, on the sort of visual relationship. I mean, we tried it with the other people, but it's, it started, um, they just seem to sit better this way. I mean, it's probably not, not it wasn't done in a, in a in a, in a conceptual way like that. It was more done in a sort of visual, intuitive way, in an intuitive sort of way. Um, so it, yeah, it could have gone. It could have gone any way when we were, were showing the work. It wasn't so prescribed. Um, but I mean, in, in ha hanging the work with you, Jerry. I mean, one, one of the things I kind of felt was that like there's a sort. Of, I mean, particularly with the judge, and I think um, this applies to the others in this room to some extent. Is that in a way. What was the decision about taking the picture of this judge? And presumably, you know, there's lots of people that go there mm. with their cameras and take mm. similar-ish pictures. I don't, I don't know. Although we, we did Google for pictures like this, and we couldn't find any on the net that looked like this, which we thought was quite extraordinary, because it seems like almost the obvious picture to take of a judge. And it sort of seems to um, you know, be about your confrontation with the object and you know, your well, decision process to say, well, that's an interesting image. Well, I was very influenced by my job when I was, when I was a st student, and I'd always wanted to go and visit the um, Mott Foundation um, out in Texas, and I got an opportunity to do it. And, but, yeah, th th this, this begs the question, is this just a photograph of, a, of someone else's sculpture, or is it of a, a work of art on its own, by being a photograph of someone? And it's a kind of, again, a compositional weird I guess computation of looking at it, and so it becomes weirdly this becomes a quite personal photo for me. I haven't really thought about it like that, but sort of looking head on, straight on at a at a Donald Judd, it's kind of just looking straight on Donald Judd, you know, and it's looking straight back at me. And um, you know, I haven't really that's the thing when you make work is sometimes it can take a long time um, to actually figure out what you're doing, or even if and other things keep coming up. There's a whole psychology of making the work. So so yeah, I'm still intrigued. So the thing is, like, I go from I'm still intrigued by it. I still I'm interested in it, like, but I don't quite know why. And as long as I keep that that question or, or, or that that sense sense of I still still trying to work it out, you know. Um, and maybe it's the closeness of the judge. Maybe it's it, it's not just a pic. It's not just a document of another sculpture. It, it's confronting that. And I, I don't know. So maybe that's. What you always do when you when you're kind of making work, um, and I'm still trying to work that one out. <laughs> it out, you know. But so uh, the judge sort of ends up becoming yours. I mean, yeah, it's your work. It's it's. Well, it is. It is. It's <laughs> you know you're in kind of interesting territory there, aren't yeah. you? Um, you have got you have got like three things, haven't you? These three yeah. main subjects that you are focused on. I mean that that inspection table or operating table is an extremely powerful. Thing and it's right in the middle of the picture, which is something that the three of them kind of have in common. That's why it's it's not just a looking space; it's it's actually quite a sculptural engaged mm. space when you spend more time here. And so, I mean, that thing is sitting right in the middle, similar to these objects you have here. Well, but, but that's because that thing that's sitting there in the middle is the focus for everything that goes on in that room. So everything is geared towards the lights. Everything is, is, and then if that was full of people doing the operate the operation, that all be over the. Uh, so that's, you know, it's, um, so it's quite and it's quite theatrical. I just I liked it as a theatrical space. I found it quite interesting, you know, being, uh, yeah, sort of. Why do any pictures have names? Why do they? Don't they? Don't they? Like on them, like most, like I like it. I know, but. They do have titles, but um, you know, it's not. It's, it doesn't really matter. I mean, titles are just a sort of way into the picture. They're not really about the title, are they? Um, uh, but it's funny. It's hard, I think, making up names for things because again, you're working with a visual language. A visual language is a different language to literal spoken language. We're we're, we're having a, a chat or a conversation, or a, and we're speaking with one language, and we're looking at these things that are made with another language. So. Um, it's it's always it's always going to be 
um, you know, yeah, separateness. I, I mean, it's something I often the literary world doesn't understand is that um, art is a different language, mm. and you can't necessarily explain it with with, mm. the, with one language one can't explain the other language necessarily. Yeah. You mentioned that um, we see things through screens. Mm. It's quite interesting that you have framed your photograph behind glass. Yeah. I just wondered whether there was a particular... Well, it's one of the first times I've done it, because I've, I've often photographed and pinned them on the walls, and, and I, I think we, we did this to, to, to bring a physicality to the work. And I think if we wanted to put things on the walls, we wanted to make them quite physical objects and um, uh, quite tangible, tangible sort of physical objects. And I think, yeah, it, it, again, could have chosen very different ways of doing it. That's always the problem with photography. Do you, do you, do you, how big do you make them? How, how, what do you, how do you present them? Um, it's, it's absolutely a bit, a bit of a nightmare, you know, um, really. But yeah, I think we just went with this and we, we thought about yeah, I think it was making them into a physical, physical thing. Um, we often talk about the distinction between digital photography and traditional photography mm. with regards to the technology you use. Mm. Um, but thinking about it as to, like, in terms of the dissemination or the presentation, mm. um, do you do you take photographs with the intention of I will print this or I will only show it on a screen in some form? Um, because increasingly, I think that, as you mentioned before, mm -hmm. a lot of the imagery we have is just disseminated yeah. through the screen. And do you do you just specific work for a screen? For no, them? I just sort of take them, and then, and then obviously now more and more using more digital stuff, I use, I then look at them through the screen because it's the easiest way of doing it. And then they get shoved into a sort of a folder somewhere, and um, maybe looked at again or not looked at for, a <laughs> and um, but. It's become the sort of the easiest way of doing. Th I mean, this is a is that a problem or not? It becomes because it becomes so easy to do, and because it becomes the norm, and because the way films being phased out, and and um, it becomes a you know such a you know you plug your camera into the to the computer and uploads it. You look at them. It's removed. Yeah. It's like removed from the actuality of yeah. Like, mm. It's not so physical. It's not so physical anymore, and, and everything exists in the clouds or in the air. And, but it's it becomes a sort of the convenient thing to do, really. I mean, you know, even now that there's a big distinction. You can still get your photos printed um, on uh, on photographic paper if you go to a, a lab. But they now distinguish that they call it wet printing as opposed to dry printing. There's no, no such thing as wet printing. In, um, before digital, because it was just printing. Um, but now there's a distinction, and it's look. There, there's good. There's there's always good things with their convenience and 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 the ease of use. And there's always other things that come out which make it a bit not not so good. Film is still a great, fantastic medium, but now it's become relatively expensive to use and slow and 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 it's just. I know maybe I'm lazy like everyone else. You can. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's an odd thing. I mean, I think we're kind of asking is, do you become, does the medium take over the, the kind of process of making? And to some extent, it possibly does. But to another extent, I'm not sure, because I think the formats of the cameras and the way you look is still, as an interesting, good image is still an interesting, good image. It doesn't matter how, where it's taken from, but, or how it's taken, or where it's shown. But, um, how, how about where, um, where it came from, just in terms of your training as a painter? Because mm. com compositionally, your photographs are quite unusual, I think, for photographs, because of the central element often. It's quite unusual. Um, and I just wonder if you talk about composition, but if there's anything from painting that you took. Oh, yeah, I mean, massively. I mean, I, I wanted to make paint, paintings through photography. I wanted to. And I think because I'd spent sort of eight or nine years at college, and, through, and, was, and maybe it was just part of me that when I, I did look at making images initially, it was as compositional things, as compositional images, and I couldn't really get away. Whereas a, whereas a photographer, training photographer, just they they tend to frame things differently. Um, you know, you're told in photography, fill the frame, fill the frame, make everything big. But I think 
I was looking at compositional images, and that was something that was quite. What important. more traditional painting? Yeah, kind of. yeah. Um, is that like golden triangle? Yeah, stuff like that. Although more, in a more intuitive way, but I was, I was initially looking at things that were happening, and I was actually seeing compositions that could have been paintings, and I was taking photographs in a, in a very compositional kind of way. But it, it moved, it, it, it changed, it, and it wasn't specifically like that. And, then, and it's not, I'm not adhering to any hard and fast rules, but it, that's kind of, of what my back, how I was kind of drawn into taking. And also, I, I was thought, thought of, Photography of being a very quick medium, as painting was taken for me, was very slow, slow, I was stuck in the studio, and I could go out with my camera, I had my studio in a box, basically, with, with me, and I could take all these images, it was outside of the studio, it was really, for me at that time, when I started, it was a very um, liberating thing. I know it sounds kind of, so, yeah, it's a camera, it's all right, everyone has it in it, but for me, in, in my working as an artist, it was an incredibly liberating thing for me, and you know, I think you just have to go with what works for you, you know, at that at, 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 at time or in the moment. So, um, yeah. Could we have a could we have a tiny break and then okay. have a look at what we have next? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, okay.